What's up, guys? Nick from the Average Biker Garage, back here with another episode of the Average Biker Podcast. Uh, today's episode features last year's champion of the Wild Stallions Motorcycle Build Competition, Zach Jones. Uh, if you guys haven't seen the bike that Zach built last year, uh, go go look at it. Go, go find the latest um, issue of Thunder Roads Magazine of Michigan, and he is on the cover of that magazine with the bike that he built last year. That bike is awesome. It was awesome to see in person. Uh, awesome to compete against him, and uh, he definitely deserved to win. The thing was sick. So I am super excited to see what he builds this year uh if it's half as good as what he built last year we're all in trouble before uh, we jump into the episode i want to give a shout out to one of the show sponsor not the podcast show but the uh, build competition show uh benchmark abrasives just came in today with an awesome prize package um, for whoever wins, it includes uh, shirts, uh, some flap discs. Uh, know, there was like eight things on there that uh, Derek sent to me. Um, like a shield, I think. I don't know. A lot of cool shit. So they um, supplied us with uh, cutoff wheels and flap discs last year. Uh, and they are stepping up again with a sweet, sweet prize package for the winner of the competition. So if you're uh, out there and a fan of build competitions and stuff like that, please go su- support uh, the sponsors like Benchmark Abrasives. Uh, you can check them out at benchmarkabrasives.com, I believe. is. I was just looking at it. Yep, yep. Okay, that's right. Uh, I will post a link down in the uh, show notes to their website um and i don't know if they have an instagram or facebook uh i know they got a website i'll i'll find out uh what all they have and link to it down in the show notes so all right with that out of the way here is today's episode featuring zach jones well ladies and gentlemen i am here with the reigning defending Wild Stallions Motorcycle Build Competition <laughs> champion, uh, Mr. Zach Jones. Uh, I usually have other people uh, introduce themselves, so go ahead and introduce yourself. Name, age, location. Yeah, Zach Jones, 45, and uh, Gaines, Michigan. Gaines. Where is that in relation to Owasso? So, it'll be east of Owasso, about Maybe southeast a little bit of Owasso, not too far, maybe half hour away or so. So you're more over towards Detroit then? Yeah, that way. Um, I'm just west of Fenton, north of Linden. Okay. So yeah, just been... west of 23, south of like Flint and all that. Gotcha. Yeah, I've been looking for a sporty and there's a bunch of them for sale up there around that area so i've been trying to get familiar with the map a little bit there you go so let's uh we'll start at the beginning when did you get into motorcycles Uh, i guess been kind of like my whole life um i got my first bike when i was seven dirt bike um that ended up passing down to my little sister and my mom and dad. They used to race motocross in the 70s and 80s. So, yeah, we've just been a bike family our whole lives. Um, Harley's, my uncle, had a shovel head back when I was a kid, and I just thought that was the coolest thing ever. So, yeah. Your parents used to race motocross back in the 70s and 80s? Yeah, yeah. I actually got... Um, Tanya, my old lady, you met her last year. She uh, mm-hmm. she painted my dad's old dirt bike helmet from the seventies. That's the silver one that's in the the magazine spread. It's a silver, just um, 
I don't even know what brand it is, but yeah, she painted uh, painted some calligraphy and uh, the shovel head motor on one side and 13 on the other side and customized it up. But yeah, that helmet's been around longer than I've been alive. That's crazy. That's uh, back then the all the bikes were still all steel. Didn't have much plastic shit on them. Oh yeah, no, it was steel gas tanks and you know, weigh 400 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. It's but, crazy yeah, to see back how then far... they'd, uh, they said back then they'd just, um, you know, race for a new tire or, you know, first place would get a tire or a gift certificate to whoever was sponsoring the gig or whatever, but some small local shop or whatever. Yeah. 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 Huh. But yeah, that's, that's where it started for me, man. Seven years old, riding a dirt bike. Yeah, what was your uh, first dirt bike? It was a YZ80, and I was seven, and that thing scared the shit out of me on more than <laughs> one occasion, man. It was way too fast for what I was, uh, my experience level at the time, but no, uh, it was good, man. It taught me how to ride, so. What year was the bike? Oh, I want to say, like, maybe a 74. It was, it was, uh steel gas tank still it was older we had so i had the yz80 i passed it down to my sister so she had the yz80 i had a yamaha 100 my mom had a yamaha 250 and my dad had the yamaha 360 and it was cool because we went to uh last year at the owasso show there was one of each of those bikes there really yeah somebody had uh, a whole collection of all those old 70s yamahas and it was the spitting image of all four of those bikes it was pretty cool i took pictures of them all and it was cool yeah that's cool as shit i uh i enjoyed walking around the show last year and just seeing all those old bikes oh yeah yeah they had some really cool stuff there it's always a good show i've been there a few times before the the competition it was uh something we used to try and make every year really yeah, it's a good show. I like uh, I like all that old stuff, man. Yeah. No, I was really impressed with it last year. Yeah, I thought they were saying that they were going to, last year was going to be their last year. So, hmm. um, yeah, sounds like they changed their minds on that. I think that was like the 19th year and this is going to be the 20th year or something. Huh. Yeah, I, well, I'm not. I think, don't quote me on it. I, I think that's what I'm remembering from last year, but, uh. Yeah, good to see it's going to still be around, so. Yeah, for sure. So, what was your first street bike? So, when I turned 16, I traded a set of tires for a Yamaha Seca 400, 450 something. It was uh, just a little Yamaha, and I rode the shit out of that thing, man. I rode it all over the place. And that was my first road bike nothing nothing big though nothing major just something to get around on if i started out on yamaha i think it was an xs 650 i wish i still had it yeah i wish i still had mine too it's a pretty (laughs) cool old bike to be nice to still have it i still got my dad my dad bought a yamaha or a honda shadow 750 ace deluxe brand new in 99 I still have that, and uh, I bobbed it, but it's still, for the most part, pretty original. I just took some stuff off of it, put some different handlebars on it and stuff, exhaust and whatnot. And then I got my dad's first Harley, which was an O2 Electroglide standard. So it's uh, it's definitely something that, you know, keeping the bikes in the family and pass them down. My Are, son's into it. He he got his, uh, well, he's been riding dirt bikes since he was a kid, but he just graduated last year, and I got him uh, an old RM125 two-stroke. I think it's like a 02, but rebuilt it, and, yeah, that's his uh, his dirt bike, and it, it's pretty, it's a pretty nice bike. Yeah, I can't remember who, who else was just on. One of the other builders was talking about um, – they had started out on RM125 and they really liked the Suzuki's. 
Yeah, that's actually the first Suzuki I ever bought. I've always ridden Hondas and Yamahas in my dirt biking. Um, my old lady, she's got a 85 big wheel Honda two stroke. And then I got a 426 Yamaha that I'm riding now that we all try and go trail riding as much as we can. Jeez, how many bikes you got? Uh, oh, running. <laughs> uh, one, <laughs> it two, doesn't matter three, if they're running. Four, five. I got six running and two not. So eight, eight or so right now. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Got yeah. a barn out back that we, we get, call it the barn. It's just a little, uh, probably three car detached garage in the backyard that it's my little workshop. I got a, a lift in there and a table in there and all my tools and stuff. Nice. Try and do all my own wrenching. You yeah. saw last year, that was last year's chopper, the 78 low rider. That was my first actual build. Something I did ground up. Yeah. You, and you had never built a bike before that. No, not a ground up like that. That was the first time I actually tore something all the way down, fabricated everything myself, you know, put it all back together. That's the bike I've been building in my head, you know, for forever. Just, uh, you know, daydreaming about what my chopper would look like someday, you know. So it uh, yeah. it all came together pretty cool. I was pretty happy about it. There's a lot of, uh, you know, buying parts and selling parts and trading and swapping and trying to get everything squared away but it was cool it was a good experience that's pretty pumped to get into it again this year yeah um so going back to last year uh how how did you hear about the build competition so one of my friends it's good friends with derek and he knew i was building i had been piecing getting pieces together basically to start building this chopper and he found out that Derek was having that competition so that's why I was late to the competition last year I don't think I got signed up until like maybe mid-March or something so I missed like the first couple of uh, interviews and whatnot and then um yeah I just wanted to use it for an excuse you know something to kick me in the ass and keep me motivated on building it you know so it's not a project that sits there for years on end never going anywhere right so yeah i was uh i was all about it last year and obviously you're coming back again this year defending your uh um championship defending the title that's right <laughs> yep i was uh i was actually pretty surprised i won last year the competition was pretty stiff People's choice. I love the people's choice thing. You know, it's not really what you or I think is cool. It's what, you know, the people walking around, it's what they right. vote on. So that's always my favorite, you know, um, category to win is people's choice. No, yeah, that's very cool. And that's, so there was only four of us last year. And that's, uh, did Derek tell you the vote uh, total tally? I think he did. I think he said it was a couple hundred votes, and I think I had the majority of oh, well, the overall vote is what I remember him saying. Yeah, no, you you had uh, the majority. God, I can't remember. It was can't either. It, I think it was a couple hundred votes, and I had like half of them or so. Yeah, I think it was pretty close to that. I know he told me I had like 68, and he had 70-something, and then... Yeah, so you would have had like 140 or whatever, and poor Terry, wow. he had he had two. <laughs> he had two. Well, you know, it's just um, I thought the competition was super stiff. I didn't like I said, I didn't even really think I was gonna win. I honestly thought Derek's bike was a little yeah. cleaner and more complete because I was scrambling at the end to get it together and uh, just even get it finished. You know, that was a uh, it was. You know, getting all that stuff together at the end and uh, putting all the dot in the I's and crossing the T's and just figuring every little thing out. And yeah, it was a uh, it was tough at the end, but it was cool, man. Cool experience. Yeah, I think there was three weeks before the show and I had a bare frame. Like I still that was it. Yeah, and we were still <laughs> painting the frame on that thing, I think. 
yeah, like you said, like two weeks before the show, I was when I was finally painting that frame and, you know, trying to work on final assembly and fabbing up all the little, <laughs> little stuff that you didn't foresee being an issue, you know, when you're uh, putting it all together. And I got lucky, man. The, the motor was freshly rebuilt. The guy wasn't pulling my leg when he sold it to me. So that yeah, was good. I rebuilt that trans myself. How hard is that to do on uh that four speed ratchet top uh not too bad not too bad um not a whole lot going on in there so just pulled it apart cleaned everything uh there's some shim adjustments you know if you want to move your gears around just a little bit just you know my it was pretty well intact though i I pulled it apart I think I had to shim first gear out a little bit or something and it was it was minimal what I had to do so it was nice. And then the guy that sold it to me said it was a brand new rebuilt motor. And I was going to tear it down anyway, because I didn't trust him. And I bore scoped it before <laughs> I started tearing it down. And you could see top of the pistons were brand new. Cross hatch in the cylinder wall was brand new. It was, I mean, fresh, fresh rebuild. I don't even know if it had been started. Huh. Well, that's always nice, you know. Yeah, buy, yeah, I was buy, pumped. Buying shit like that, you're, you know, not not 100 percent sure you gotta go off what whoever tells you you know yeah yeah that's why i just assumed yeah i'm gonna be rebuilding this you know at least taking it apart and but no i was happy man i saved a bunch of money didn't have to buy any gaskets or rebuild kit or nothing and it was cool ended up uh, firing right up runs oh, good runs strong hell yeah who uh who built the frame I did. That's the so I bought the original frame, motor and trans. So that's all numbers matching, and then. Uh, oh, that's cool. Yeah, I was pumped about that. So I found it all to. It was a a basket case, but it was all the matching numbers, with a title. So originally I was gonna, I had a rigid frame that I was gonna put everything in, but then once I found matching numbers with everything i just bought a kit and chopped the frame myself so uh, i wanted to keep those matching numbers obviously with the the frame but um yeah 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 did it myself fabbed uh fabbed most of that all myself the handlebars the fender i think the only thing i bought was the the gas tank i bought it a swap meet but i put like the the fuel gauge on the side and you know, tried to trick it out a little bit so it wasn't just some stock tank. And then uh, the old lady, she she's a hell of an artist, so she painted the hell out of it. And yeah, ended up looking pretty good, man. Yeah, she does photography too, right? No, she's just artist. She does oh. like murals and stuff, and then she paints like anything. She can look at anything and paint it on the side of a wall or on a gas tank or. It's pretty cool, man. She's uh, pretty talented. I thought, man, well, for some reason, I saw her walking around with a camera last year. I nope. Know, uh, else. She might have been hanging out with uh, her friend might have had the camera. What's that she did? Yeah, her friend had a camera. She was walking okay. around. Okay. That's what I was thinking of then. So your uh, your bike, it didn't just win the Wild Stallions thing, didn't you uh, win another show? I yeah, so I, I actually you... took I took it around a couple shows last year. Um, Boomers does a a show every week out in uh, Waterford at the Shark Club. Um, and I won every week. He's got a couple different categories. I won the custom bike one week there, and then that qualifies you for his end of the year show. So then I took it to the end of the year show and uh, I won the overall uh, custom, which is like a five foot tall trophy. <laughs> it's pretty oh, wild, geez. man. <laughs> yeah. The the trophy's taller than Boomer. So it was uh, it was pretty cool. And then I went out to. Uh, what was the one at Birch Run? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Thunder. Days of Thunder. Days of Thunder. Yeah, Days of Thunder. We did that one. I took uh, People's Choice on that one. 
Yeah, yeah, a couple trophies last year. I think um, I think eight total. Damn. Trophies with it. Yeah, I was I was a trophy whore last year. <laughs> <laughs> Riding it around anywhere I could to try and get a trophy. Nothing wrong with that, man. Yeah, no, it was pretty cool experience. Yeah, scooters up in Flint. They did uh they had a couple shows. I won a trophy up there. Akron had a Which, show. I won a trophy at. Yeah, I thought there was another one in the um in the magazine that uh they were covering again. That's that was the Days of Thunder. Was it? Yeah, that's the one up there in uh like Bertrand. Nice. What's the Speedway? Is it Bertrand Speedway? Yeah, I think it was Bertrand Speedway. That was pretty cool. That was a good turnout. They had a bunch of stuff going on up there that day. Hmm. We'll probably do that show again. Thunder Roads Magazine was up there. That RJ told me to go up to that one. So what are you uh, planning for this year for the building competition? So this year I've been putting parts together um, for a 76 Ironhead Sportster. I got the frame and stuff out of a one deal and then I was looking for a motor for it. Ended up finding a motor in Ohio. Went and picked that up. Supposedly freshly rebuilt again. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. But uh, yeah, here I'll show you the the trophies here. We got this guy. Oh, this shit. one's here. Got that one. Of course, we got the stallion. <laughs> we got that was Thunder Roads. And that guy there. And that guy there. So, yeah, a couple of them. And then, of course, the Boomers trophy that's freaking five feet tall. <laughs> But yeah, we're working on the iron head this year. Um, got most of the parts together. I'm going to do the flint swap here next week or whenever that is. And then I'm going to do a booth at the Novi swap in March. Try and offload some stuff and pick up some new stuff. See what we gotcha. can get going. So last year I built, that was my personal bike, the 78 shovel. I'm building the 76 iron head for Tanya for my old lady. Oh, and, really? Uh, yeah. Yeah. It'll be for her. And I'm going to let her pick out the tins and the stance and she's going to paint it all herself. So I'm pretty pumped, man. She's going to blow my bike away. So I know all we right. got some stiff competition <laughs> this year, but yeah, it'll, it'll be cool, man. I'm excited. I was going to say she, she knows that your reputation's on the line you know is the defending oh, champion damn right. i'm gonna let her <laughs> design it but i'm gonna prove it <laughs> <laughs> oh man that's awesome i think that's great that you all uh you and the old lady and the kids all ride and you know or uh, have motorcycles in common yeah yeah it's a family affair over here for sure it's that's awesome blood. how many kids you got just the one just the one one son yep yeah, one son, really proud of him. He's only 20 years old and he's got his own place, got his own career. He's him and his girlfriend got their own. They're looking for a house right now. So, yeah, really proud. Oh, yeah. So he's older then. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm 45 so, and he's 20. So, yeah, it's So next been an year experience. Ne next year you're going to build a bike for him then. Yeah, I guess it'll be his turn, won't it? <laughs> <laughs> it'll be 21, so hey, you know. Yeah, there you go. Go bar hopping. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You'd be a, a father of the year or two collecting that trophy, in my opinion. Yeah, right. <laughs> so you um you have a shop too, don't you? Actually, uh, I just been doing it in my barn. Yeah. Um, I was trying to start a shop last year when I was um, doing the 78 and it just with my my day job and my career, it's just it gets to, it's too much. Yeah. So I'm just doing it as it's just a hobby really for me now. 
Brunching, building, riding. That's what we do in our spare time. Less assholes to deal with that way. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, if if down the road someone saw the bike and wanted me to build them one, you know, it's something I might do one-off stuff, one one here and there type thing. But as far as starting a shop, it's just not in the cards right now. Gotcha. Yeah, sometimes, you know, when you try and make your hobbies your job, they turn into a job and sucks That's the fun it. out of all that shit. Yeah, absolutely. So, you've obviously competed in the uh, competition last year and you didn't have any issues, you know, um, making time for family affairs and shit like that. So, no, that's why I was scrambling so hard at the end. <laughs> oh, yeah, was it? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, I kept, uh, you know, I'll just work for an hour here, hour there, and then, oh, crap, I only got a month left and two months yeah. worth of work to do, so <laughs> I better get my ass <laughs> out there. No, I totally, totally understand it. Um, all right, man, well, that's, that's all I got for you. I appreciate you again. Sorry for all the last minute shit. And I'm, I still haven't found a bike to chop yet. So I've been trying to sell my truck and trying to sell a bunch of other stuff to get a, get a little sporty around to chop up. All right. So, well, uh, I'll keep my eyes open. If I hear anything, uh, yeah, man. I'll shoot you a freaking message and any leads I find, I'll shoot, swing them your way. Yeah, that'd be great. So, yeah, again, right. sorry for uh, being uh, <laughs> crazy and schedules conflicting and all that. Oh, no, so. you're good, man. At least we got through it here. Yeah. I wanted to say, too, any of those guys building uh, Shovelhead, I know I've been listening to the interviews. A couple other guys are doing shovels this year. If they need any parts or anything, you're trying to source stuff, yeah, hit me up. I'm all about working together and uh, making sure we got some awesome bikes out there this year. Hell yeah. That'll lighten the load on the way to the Flint swap meet too, right? Yeah, damn right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, buddy. Well, I appreciate it. Uh, I thank you for your time and look forward to seeing you again this year. All right. Sounds good, man. Good luck. All right. Later, buddy. You're going to need it. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. No shit. No shit. All See right, you, man. Buddy.